Hey everybody, welcome to our continuing coverage of the Steel Timber Sports Series. Today we've got a special treat for you. We're jumping across the pond to the United States of America where we are going to check out the U.S. Men's Championship. Now, Steel Timber Sports has been busy in the United States since 1985 and the sport itself has expanded to 20 countries in that time since then till now. So it is definitely a growing sport and we can call it the original extreme sport as you've seen in broadcast past so uh, that's a great thing this event has started with 40 athletes competing in four regional competitions that was whittled down to 20 athletes competing in two semifinals and today we're going to be jumping into the finals with the remaining 12 athletes that are qualified for this event this should be an exciting competition and we'll be looking to the veterans to see what they can really pull out of their bags this time around, including six-time U.S. champ Matt Kogar, 2019 U.S. champ and international silver medalist Cassidy Shear. These two guys will definitely be battling hard for the top spot on the podium today. And we've also got Matt Slingerland in the mix as well as Jason Lentz. Jason Lentz is a big man. He's a... Uh, third generation wood chopper so you know he is definitely going to be in the mix today all right and let's not count out the newcomers we've got nate hodges a former rookie competitor who is going to be in the mix today these guys are definitely going to be hungry for top spots on the podium adam lethko is in the mix we've got ben nicely as well as matthew bolton and a couple of these guys are brand new to the competition so they'll be cutting their teeth, so to say, today. So without further ado, let's send it over to our two hosts on the U.S. side, Tommy Sanders and Kevin Holtz. Take it away, guys. Hello and welcome to you. Welcome to the big one. We have reached the finals, the final round, Steel Timber Sports U.S. Championships 2021. Tommy Sanders here with Kevin Holtz. And Kevin, we started with 40 hopefuls from around the country. We're down to 12 on this day. You can pick your favorites. You can pick chalk favorites very easily. The last two champions in this event. But beyond the chalk, there's plenty of them. Yeah, Matt Koger, six-time champion. Cassidy Shear, our 2019 champion, looking for that validation of another championship. Two in a row really elevates his standing in the Timber Sports rankings. But there are a lot of guys there nipping at their heels. Don't forget about Matt Slingerland, Jason Lentz. They've both been so close so many times. Our 2019 rookie phenom, Nate Hodges, put on a clinic in 2019 that shocked everybody. They got guys like Grant Foreman, they've just been running like a house of fire. These guys are coming out of the woodwork grabbing points left and right. A very, very tough 2021 championship event. Absolutely. It's been wild. Every stage of getting here will be wild all day long today. We have stages today, eliminations after certain disciplines, so you got to survive all the way to the hot saw. All the twists and turns in the drama start now. The Steel Timber Sports Individual Competition. In the first round, all athletes compete in three disciplines. The underhand chop, the stock saw, and the standing block chop. The times achieved will be converted into points upon completion of each discipline. In round one, a difference of one point applies in each discipline. Thus, the fastest athlete received 12 points and the slowest only one point. Any rule infraction will result in a disqualification and the athlete will receive zero points for that discipline. At the end of the first round, the athletes with the lowest scores are eliminated. Only eight athletes make it to the second round. In this second round, the remaining athletes compete in the single buck and the springboard for increased scores. With two points difference between placings, the fastest athlete now receives 16 points and the slowest receives two. The two athletes with the lowest total points are eliminated at the end of round two. Only the top six reach the third round. In the third round, anything is still possible in the hot saw, as an increased score interval of three points applies in this final round. The fastest athlete can score up to 18 points at the hot saw, the slowest only three points. The athlete who manages to achieve the highest total score across all three rounds is the new champion. Don't blink in the underhand shot. This is one of the fastest events in timber sport. The elite athletes will be hitting the log in less than one second per hit. They will chop the front half of the log using their $700 X. After they cut the front half of the log, the transition to the back is seamless. 
In less than one second, the ax is into the back side of the log. A two and two pattern, removing the chips. Then when you get close to the center, you have to be confident. Using precision, accuracy, power, you will drive the log off. Seems dangerous, right? It's actually one of the safest events. And yes, they are wearing a chain mail sock protection underneath their shoes. First heat of the underhand chop, Matthew Bolton against Adam Lefko. Matthew Bolton will be on stand number one out of Canandaigua, New York. From Maryville, Tennessee. To his right, Adam Lefko. Gonna start the Steel Timber Sports US Men's Championship with the first of six disciplines. The underhand chop, this is heat number one. That right there is Adam Lefko. He'll be on stand number two from Tennessee and from New York. Matthew Bolton on stand one. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. We're just dipping our toe into the water here on the championship day. This is our first litmus test. We'll see where we're at. Watch how these blocks come apart. And these guys are already setting a blistering pace. Bolting around very quick around the eight and a half second mark with Lethko right on his heels. Lethko's block holding wood a bit. It's not letting those chips fall out. He cleans it up. He's got to work for that bottom, but it's too late. Bolton punches it off around 21 seconds. Let's go back and take a look at this round from Matt Bolton. Front side of the block, you see he's accumulating some chips on the back. Nice looking clean chips, big pieces of timber. That's what we want to see. Punches in the guts, goes up high. Nice round of four, drops down a little lower as he comes back to that chip side. That chip is just there waiting to be released there. That bottom chip hit, does it? Look to drive this thing. There's the top. Doesn't even need a middle hit down to the bottom. <laughs> Great cut, Matt. You came off, you said out loud, there we go. How'd you do? Yeah, uh, I've kind of been lost in my underhands lately. Uh, my semis wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. Uh, chose a different axe today. Seemed to cut really well. My first two hits pretty much went right to handle. I knew it was cutting well and then I tried to just turn on the gas as much as I could. All right, great start to the day, good job. Yeah, thanks. Second heat of the underhand chop, Grant Foreman and Nate Hodges. Grant Foreman on stand number one out of Marysville, Ohio. His first year making the finals in timber sports. Nate Hodges made it last year, his first attempt, his first time in the finals, keep an eye on him. Heat number two getting ready to go with Grant Foreman of Ohio going up against Nate Hodges of California, last year's runner-up in these championships. Hodges on the right, Foreman on the left. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one. Go! At 2019, Nate Hodges arrives on the scene like a thunderbolt. It's a Making the finals, finishing second overall, just an absolute phenomenal performance. And look at this, he's around to the backside already, just laying waste to this block. He's a club-handed chopper, keeps both hands at the bottom of the axe handle. A really exceptional fast swing speed, got lost a little bit there. Maybe uh, drove just a little too soon, but great clean cut coming in under 20 seconds. Nate Hodges has just hit this Timber Sports arena like a hurricane. It's been, just been absolutely insane to watch him come on board. Watch him make this turn, opening blow right to the handle, comes up to the top, he's gonna go to a two and two pattern here. Stepped in a little bit on that chip side, may have been intentional, shortened his face a little bit, but it kind of set the, there's where the problems came from. Remember I said at the end, he seemed like he was a little bit lost. Well, if you look at the chip side on the bottom, he started to close himself in a little bit. It just it cost him a little bit of space to work and uh, it may have cost him a hit in the end. Doesn't seem like a lot, but 
we're, we're, this is championship time. We're Yikes. down to tenths, hundreds of a second. Right. Every swing counts. Heck of a cut. Uh, you're saying it's at least four seconds faster than your semi-final underhand. Did you change anything? Well, I, I think I got a little more sleep, a little more amped up, and my good buddy, Matt or Sling, Matty Slingerland, he touched up my axe for me, and it, for me, that's a good cut. All right, well, unofficially, you're in the lead around 19 seconds. Good luck. I'll take it. Thanks, guys. Nate Hodges indeed turning up the volume now in the championship round, a time of 19.41. Matthew Bolton holding in second with 21-21, then Foreman and Lefko. Underhand chop, heat three, Walt Page and Ben Nicely. Walt Page coming all the way from Toll House, California, from Shelby, North Carolina. To his right on stand number two will be Ben Nicely chasing that new time laid down of a 19-4-1. Here we go, heat number three, Walt Page from out in the Sierras in California, North Carolina's Ben Nicely, former collegiate champ, Steel Timber Sports. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Both of these guys, college success stories, thanks to the collegiate program with the Steel Timber Sports Series. This is, this is exactly what we had hoped for, and, and we got it. Two exceptional cutters going head to head, both very similar body styles, both very similar choppers, long reach. It looks like Walt Page is going for the bottom of that block, and he's got, oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> mm. Welcome to the championships. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh man. Very nice. We're gonna have, th this won't be the last time. This is gonna be, <laughs> The, the, the bar for the day. We're gonna see tight races, tense, hundreds of a second separating these guys. Nothing left We're down on the to, table, right? Oh yeah, let's go back and watch this finish. Walt Page gets a, a solid hit and a half in on Ben Nicely. I, I'm curious to see where Nicely picked up the advantage. Just a, a really soft back of the block for Ben Nicely. Left a good amount of wood in the top, but he drove it very accurately, very cleanly. Wow, mm. what a race. Ben, your first year in the Timber Sports Finals, you look like a veteran out there. Tell us about that underhand. It looks like you just beat Walt. Yeah, the underhand felt good. I did feel good. The axe felt good. The wood was great, falling apart. So I'm happy with it. All right, good luck the rest of the day. I appreciate it. Well, there you go, Ben Nicely closing out Walt Page by less than a tenth of a second right there. 20.722 puts him in second place behind Hodges. Heat for the underhand, Josh Wilson versus Jason Lentz. A West Virginia showdown here, Josh Wilson on stand number one. And from Diana, West Virginia, coming in at six foot six. That's Jason Lentz. Ready for heat number four right now. The time to beat 19.41 put down by Nate Hodges. On stand number one, Josh Wilson of West Virginia going up against another West Virginian, Jason Lentz. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Jason Lentz, a multi-generational chopper, just passing down from generation to the next. I feel like this man has been passed over for a championship title, and I'm curious if 2021 is gonna be his year. Look at the slabs just falling apart on that block. He is already going into a drive mode, and there it is. 17 seconds showing on the unofficial clock. Take a look at this run from Jason Lentz. It's six foot six. He can bring that ax from a serious altitude back down to the block. Moves into the back side of this block. Let's watch how he opens it up. Came in maybe a little bit high on that. Overlapping those hits a little bit. But look at that slab of wood that it generated. You see the twist in the grain there. Already at that point, he is at the halfway point at the top. He goes and punches it in the guts once. Goes to the bottom. I can't believe that broke at the bottom. 
That axe, in my mind, should have been sticking a lot further out the bottom, but sheer horsepower just sliced through those fibers. What a cut in the underhand. You cut it perfect. A pattern of eight in the front. You repeated it with eight in the back. How important is spreading the axe out? And what size axe are we using today? Yeah, it's seven and three quarter by seven and three quarter. Original finisher by Fabe Sefo down in uh, New Zealand. But yeah, it's really important, Dave. You, uh, you gotta make sure you hang the heel in the top and reach that bottom wood in the bottom of the log. Cut it as square as you can. That's the, sh the shape of the ax. Matches to the log, so the square you hit, the more your ax is gonna penetrate. 17 seconds, you're in the lead. Good job. Thank you. One more look at that run from Jason Lentz. Nearly eight inch ax face just raining down into the face of that white pine block. Well, Jason Lentz becoming the third heat winner to better his semifinal time by about four seconds. He puts down a 16.64 to take over the lead from Nate Hodges. Heat six of the underhand. Cassidy Shear versus Arden Coger Jr. Cassidy Shear, the area comes in on standard one on the left. They are both chasing a new time from Jason Lentz of 16.64. Going to be your defending champion, Cassidy Shear, on stand number one on the left there in the foreground, qualifying for his 26th championship final, Arden Coger Jr. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. 60 pounds less of Arden Coger Jr. to love this year, but he is bringing a tenacity to 2021. He's drawn the 20, or excuse me, the 2019 champion over on stand number one, Cassidy Shear, who is grenading this block apart, looking to drive and maybe a little premature. There goes the top, there goes the middle, there goes the bottom. He had to do one more round down through that block. Arden Coger Jr. not happy with that block. He shakes his head. Got himself pinched in pretty hard on it and ran out of real merchantable timber in the middle. <laughs> Look at this run from Cassidy Shear. There he punches it in the guts right out of the gate. One in the top, going to that two and two pattern. You can see those chips shifting. There's a lot of cut wood there, even though it doesn't look like it at the bottom. It's just kind of hanging in there. Goes middle and bottom again. He's trying to drive it at this point, but a little premature in my mind. He's got to revisit, do that same three hit pattern again finds the weak link and exploits it. Not gonna be good enough for a winning time, but up there in the top three, I would think. Cassie, our returning champion, but Jason Lentz lays down such a tough time to beat. What's your state of mind going into a chop knowing it's gotta be in 16 seconds? Yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't trying to chase Jason. I was trying to do my cut, and I had a good cut. I probably should have gone one more over on the bottom. Maybe it would have come off a hit earlier, but uh, I think I got ahead of Nate. That's what I'm mostly concerned about. And uh, yeah, that was a good start. I'm, I'm, I'm swinging the ax well. well. You know, you're the only competitor in timber sports history to win a national title without actually winning in a single event in 2019, yeah. but it shows your consistency. Yeah, I mean, getting thirds and fours and a second here and there is enough to win. Um, yeah, I, I consider more about, you know, hitting singles and doubles and hitting home runs every event. Thanks for your time. Thank you. There's Cassidy Shear's time up at 19.25. Yes, he does not get ahead of Jason Lentz. He said he was most concerned about getting ahead of Nate Hodges, and he has achieved that by a couple of tenths of a second. Final heat of the underhand chop from Knoxville, Tennessee, Matt Slingerlin. And his opponent from Crafton, West Virginia, Matthew Coger. This one's going to be Matt Slingerland, who came within a whisker of winning this thing back in 2018. Going up against the man who has won six times in the past decade, 
Matthew Koger. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Matt Koger missed out on number seven in 2019. Matt Slingerland threw a, a sawing issue, we'll call it, missed out on one a year before. So there was a lot of opportunities. There's a lot of stress out there. These guys want that title. Oh, Matt Koger, Ooh. around the 17 and a half second mark. Just drove an enormous amount of wood. There's a huge wall of timber in the backside of that block. So I don't need to clear those chips. I can just slice through them. Watch as he makes this turn to the backside. Little bit of an off kilter stutter step. Big penetration of the axe on the opening blow. Steps in his chip side. That may have been intentional. If he knew he had a really good block, he may have been shorting himself up a little bit. Runs into a driving pattern. Man, what a... Like, hmm. ah. <laughs> <laughs> we, should, we should put this on television. I, I'm, like I'm all for it. Yeah. Count me in. Matt, when you're cutting that fast, you have to analyze everything. You said a couple sticks, but all, all those sticks add up, don't they? Yeah. Um, anytime that you're sticking, you're just not moving the axe, and then you kind of miss out on your flow. And, you know, it's a good thing I had my Duluth bullpen underwear on. It kept me everything straight and in line, and it, all, it worked out in the end. All right, great job. At the worst, you'll be second. We're waiting for the results. Good luck. Yeah, thank you. Matthew Coger, everything aligned perfectly, chopping the chop he wanted to make right there, and the result is he takes the top spot. After the underhand chop is complete there, 16.215, just edging Jason Lentz, Cassidy Shear, and Nate Hodges in third and fourth. Tommy, I've been doing some expert analysis, just looking at those scores in the underhand already, and I can tell you that there's a pretty good chance that one of those guys in that top five is gonna be our next champion for 2021. If it's not one of those guys in the top five, uh -huh. look maybe six through 12, and there's a couple of choices in there as well. But within that top 12, at least, we will crown a new champion. Let's keep it going with the next discipline with our Duluth Trading Company Discipline Review. The Steel Stock Saw, two competitors going head to head with identically tuned MS661 chainsaws. After a 15 second warm up, all eight fingers must be crossing that line. On go, with speed, they retrieve the saw. With precision, they enter the saw into the wood. Listening to the RPMs, feeling the saw, cutting through the wood, severing that first clean disc. Then, the perfect transition, and again, with precision, entering the log for the up cut. Hopefully seeing two complete discs on the ground, and of course, this four inch line remaining for a leaving putt. First heat of the steel stocks on Nate Hodges versus Ben Nicely. Nate Hodges on stand number one out of North Fork, California. Ben Nicely, Shelby, North ready Carolina. To start the sock, ready to start the stock saw. That is discipline number two out there. Heat number one is going to feature Nate Hodges standing in fourth place. After one discipline is complete, Ben Nicely in sixth over there on stand number two. Warm up your saws. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Synchronized runs through the top. If anything, there's just a little bit of extra pressure over on stand number one. Is it too much? May have been. Been nicely on stand two. Just eked out a win in that heat. 10-5-6 showing on the unofficial time, but it's unofficial. It's unofficial. It's unofficial. Good point. Let's watch this run from Ben nicely up into the timber, clean, square. Nicely proportioned cut. <laughs> not, left himself plenty of real estate, but not dangerously thin. Not a whole lot of air time on that switch. As I mentioned, I think if anything on stand one, 
Sounded like Nate Hodges was just a little heavy on that saw. He was just on the low side of that torque curve. Loaded up the chain a bit much. Loaded up that clutch housing a bit much. Ben, unofficially in the mid tens. That's one of the fastest times laid down all year. How did you feel the cut went? I felt the cut went great. You know, that was probably the smoothest stock saw cut that I've had all year, so I'm happy with it. What's your definition of smooth? Um, if you can feel the vibration in the saw, the same vibration the entire time, no ups or downs, that's what I want smooth. Sounds good. Good luck rest of the day. Appreciate it. Those vibrations Ben nicely is talking about are good vibrations for him today. And, and to his point, again, you want to stay in that perfect sweet spot. There, you're cutting small wood at the top of the block, you're cutting big wood in the middle of the block, and you're back to small wood at the bottom again. So it's not just consistent pressure. You've got to be varying your pressure, hand, eye, ear coordination through that entire cut. Good time there for Ben Nicely, 10.31. Nate Hodges, 10.57. Both of these competitors improving about 10 to 15% over their semifinal time. All right, let's give it up for Walt Page and Josh Wilson. Walt Page on stand number one all the way from California. Josh Wilson, East Coast, Morgantown, West Virginia, chasing 10-3-2. Heat number two getting ready to go. Walt Page coming in in seventh position in overall points. Josh Wilson in 11th position. Pretty salty time to beat for a first heat laid down by Ben Nicely. 10.31. Warm up your saws. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! This is, this is how the championships are going to go. These guys are synchronized sawing. Slight advantage to Walt Page. Josh Wilson, though, putting it on. Whoa. Oh, my gosh. 10 4 5 shown on the unofficial clock. We're hanging out in the mid to low 10s. These guys, they're switched on. They're absolutely switched on. Take go a little back time to sort this one out, huh? Oh, yeah. Let's go back and watch this side by side. Clearly the advantage, Walt Page on the switch. Josh Wilson, though, you could hear that saw. He's just pulling down just slightly more. And he had a little better time through the wood on that second cut. Wilson barely edges out Walt Page. Maybe nanoseconds are points. You know, a win's a win. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. And, and yeah. so. Yeah. Something as minute as that could be champion or no champion. Sure. Josh, you came off slow, right behind Walt Page, but you gained ground on the upcut. What did you adjust on the upcut? I just adjusted pressure. I mean, usually the first cut, uh, I'm trying to feel the wood, feel the saw, how everything's going. So after that first cut, I realized it puts more pressure on it. So the upcut, I, I really, really gave it to it, and it took everything I gave it. So I. I, was, I think I was floating that flying line of, of hanging it up and, and not, but uh, it worked and I caught him and uh, I'm happy with that cut. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Not that it needs my validation, but I agree with that completely. I think he really was running that fine line. I could hear the engine RPMs coming down and there, there wasn't any more for that saw to give, but good on Josh Wilson for recognizing that fine line and pushing it. There's your official time, and Josh Wilson takes over the lead with a 10.31. <laughs> and he's five one hundredths, five one thousandths of a second faster than Ben Nicely, who's tucked into second place. You're right. Uh, just, a, just an eyelash can mean the difference in places, many times multiple places. Our returning champion overall, Cassidy Shear on stand number one against Grant Foreman. Heat number three, a couple of competitors who had great hot saw times in their qualifying rounds, final qualifying rounds. Cassidy Shear going to be on stand number one, stand number two, Ohio's Grant Foreman.
Warm up your saws. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Grant Foreman had a great day in semifinals action, enjoying his first day of finals competition. Cassidy Shear, though, has the advantage of the switch. He's going to have the advantage all the way through. Cassidy Shear, great run on stand number one in the stock saw. 10.85 showing on the unofficial clock, but that was that was slow. That, it, that was a faster cut than that. Let's watch Cassidy Shear as he gets up to the wood. Right on the money, thin to win. Nice straight run down through that first cut. Loads of spray coming out of the back of that saw. On the way up, brings the nose of the saw right back into the block. And then you can see, you can see the change in his facial expression. About two inches to go towards the top of that block. That's when you just, you, you throw all your chips on the table and you're anticipating the end of that cut. If there were three inches of wood left, that saw would have fallen on its face. But timing that just right, you can rip off that cut, you overload the saw, and then it can fall on its face, whatever it's got to do at the end of the cut. I mean, look, if you're not going to win an event, you just have to be right there. And it yeah. looks like you're right there again in the stock saw. Yeah, I mean, that'll, that'll be middle of the pack, I imagine, maybe a little bit less than that. I was a little, I was slow to the wood. I ran the saw well in the wood, just a little, I, I don't know, like when that gun goes off and you're grabbing the saw, if, you, if you're not totally locked in, which I was thinking about, do I be fast or be slow? And yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm glad the event's over with two complete discs. And I won the heat, so I'm not last. One of your best events, the standing block, coming up. We're going to yeah. let you get ready for I, that. I am all about the next event. The, that, that stock saw is over time to cut a good standing block. All right, good luck. Thanks. Yeah, Cassidy called it right. We're in the middle of the pack, maybe just a little above the middle of the pack there with a 10.75. Grant Foreman with a 10.97 and heat number three. Heat four, the stocks are Arden Coger Jr. versus Matthew Bolton. And they are still chasing that time from heat one of Ben Nicely. 10-3-1. Heat number five coming up. Excuse me, heat number four coming up. In the stock saw, Arden Coger Jr. had a bit of a slow start in the underhand, our first discipline. He's coming in in 10th place and 8th place. To start the second discipline is Matthew Bolton. Bolton on stand two, Arden Coger on stand one. Warm up your saws. <laughs> Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Bit of a funny up on the throttle for one of these guys. I couldn't tell who it was. They are neck and neck at the switch. Bolton burying the nose of that bar. I think it's going to come out advantage Arden mm -hmm. on this one on stand one. And again, middle tens. Not to sound like a broken record, but. We're just stacking times in here. Let's watch the end of this cut again. Both of these guys right together at the switch. Wow, really tight. I'm still going to say advantage Coger, but that was a really tight finish. Great cut in the stock saw. Sounded like a little hesitation on the retrieval of the saw. Did you miss the throttle? Uh, what happened was I, I did miss the throttle on the way to the hand, the trigger, and I had to readjust on the way up in order to open it up wide open. Got it wide open right when I hit the wood. So I didn't lose any RPMs, I don't think. I needed a good cut, particularly after that mate that uh, cut in the underhand. Hopefully it puts me in the topper part or upper echelons of the stock saw because uh, it's kind of hard to keep up with these young guys in the chops anymore. I know the feeling. Well, great cut, great recovery. Good luck in the standing. Thank you. 
Go back and look at that run. I, I told you I heard a bobble somewhere, and now we got the confession. It was Arden Koger Jr. missed that trigger or didn't quite get his full finger on the trigger. Had to adjust, lift. He did say he got the saw up to full RPM. You can see he's coming down on that up cut at a bit of an angle. Did the job, though, on this up cut. Reeled in Matt Bolton just barely. Got it done. Pretty flashy stock saw competition here. Just over half a second separating our entire field so far. Arden Coker Jr. with the 10.331 takes that heat, puts himself in third place. Matthew Bolton, two spots down in fifth. Fifth heat of the stock saw Matthew Coger versus Jason Lentz. Both these competitors coming out of West Virginia still trying to catch that 10-3-1 up in nicely. Just looking down those times, Tommy, I can remember, I remember back in the day, you'd say, ah, I want to cut in the 10s. But you got to specify now. Oh, yeah. Eight contestants all in the 10-second range. Yeah. 10-3 and change up to a 10-9 and change. It just, mm. th th these guys, again, they just keep honing their craft. Matthew Koger and stand number two, Jason Lentz on stand number song. one. This should be a good one. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Wow, Matt Coger very quick to the wood. Jason Lentz right on his heels. Change still advantage, Matt Coger. <laughs> Got close. Uh, folks, we can do this all day. Pull up a chair. <laughs> Jason and Matt, a little fist bump as they walk off the stage. These guys have been longtime friends, multi-generational competitors, grew up in the same region, and traveling around forever together, head to head. Yeah, I'm not calling that one. I'm not calling that one. Unbelievable. What exceptional runs by both these guys. I would save that section of tape in a, in a vault somewhere. That might be, you know, whichever way the, the, the cookie crumbles on that, that might be our championship deciding moment right Could there. Be. And it, it's crazy to me to think four or five years ago, we were looking at, at these two guys, like Matt, Jason, Matt, Jason, who's gonna win? Matt, Jason, and those are the two names we kept saying. Well, then Matt Slingland came in the mix. Well, then Cassidy Shear came, became part of the conversation almost overnight. Nate Hodges literally overnight yeah. became part of the conversation. It's This field has gotten so deep just in the past two or three years. It's, it's amazing. It's, it's the Wild West now, no doubt about it. Anyone can have a bust out performance. Hoger on the prowl again this year. You won the underhand chop. You went up against your longtime rival, Jason Lentz. I can't pick that stock saw win. What's it like racing against Jason? Oh, it's, a, it's it's phenomenal, you know. Like he he's a great sawyer and great axman, and uh, you know you kind of tend to gauge each other off, you know, how everybody performs, and like you know we trade off wins and for for wins, and you know it's just kind of it just makes it fun, just because it's like okay, well, what, what's everybody going to do? Let's see how we go, and and just enjoy the moment. Sounds like you won that heat. We're not sure about your official time overall, but right now we're unofficially first or second. You know, those uh, the stock saws are running really good this year, and. Uh, so thanks to Steele for that, and uh, just look forward to the next events. Good luck. Thank you. Matthew Coker's time officially now at 10.42. Leaves Josh Wilson on top. Wilson has been nicely, just within hundreds of a second of each other. Jason Lentz's time officially 10.47. He's in seventh place. Oh, we just got to shoehorn in two more 10 second runs here. You know, one heat left. We'll just We're running out of digits to land on here. Yeah, yeah, afraid. really. Unbelievable. I, I don't, I, I, I can't think of a time that's ever happened. No, no. That, Not even close, I don't think. No. 
I mean, within a second or two, but to throw everybody under the 10 second umbrella. Final heat of the stock saw, Adam Lethko versus Matthew Slingerlin. The time of 10-3-1 correction, it is Josh Wilson holding the lead of a 10-3-1. Ben Nicely, five one thousandths behind him. Adam Lefko cut a 9.99 in the semifinal performance, set a new record. One heat later, Matt Slinger cut a 9.97. These are your top two seeds, obviously. That's that's the only way I'm going to allow a non 10 second run is if we post up some nines. <laughs> and both these guys, Adam Lefko just has been a natural operator with this song. Matt Slingerland is a student of this discipline. Athletes ready. Analyzing, micro analyzing your every aspect of these Three, cuts. Three, two, one. Go! One-handed grab for Matt Slingerland. He is up and running. Lefko is right there with him. Oh, my God. That guy's is just perfect on the switches. Oh, oh Lefko. Lefko got him. Matty Slinger was so quick to the top of that log, that patented one-handed grab. Something happened along the way, though. Clean at the switch. Everything's looking good. And then right about, yeah, there it is. Just a little too aggressive. Remember, all these guys, they are pushing that envelope. They're just right up to the edge of that cliff. And that was Matt Slingerland just dipping his toes off the edge. Here's Adam Lethko's run. Like, no wasted movement. Just clears the top of that log. The saw is in the block and cutting. Look at the chips discharging. You cannot fit any more material through the back end of that chainsaw. Clean, smooth, consistent, all the way through. There you go, buddy. There you go. Adam, in order to excel in timber sports, you really have to hyper-analyze every event. If you had to analyze that stock saw, where could you have gained ground? Uh, I'd say I could have gained ground. The top of the wood was a little bit red and a little bit firmer. Uh, I think it probably went a little bit too heavy off the top and it didn't let the saw speed up enough. Uh, and it could conversely happened on the way back up out of that up cut. So um, I'd say that'd be where it kind of happened for me, a little bit too heavy off the get-go. All right, thanks for your time. Thank you. Well, there are your official scores for the full field. If you can't get under 11 seconds, get out of town. I think that's the message here at our championships. Josh Wilson of West Virginia is going to take the top points right there, followed by Ben Nicely and Arden Coger Jr. And, and look at the cuts from Lethko and Slingerland. I mean, those are those are our top seeds in this stock saw event that both had, well, except for Maddie's bobble, but still really solid cuts. And Adam Lethko ends up in the middle of the pack, and Maddie Sling with a bottom bobble ends up down towards the bottom of the pack. Like these, these guys are getting so dialed in with the stock saw. Better bring it to this contest, obviously. Remember, after this next discipline, our third discipline, we're going to drop the bottom two, 11th and 12th place. We see Lefko and Foreman in there, so it's on them to perform in this next one. Matthew Koger on top in total points. He is the leader, Ben Nicely. Two behind, and one behind is Jason Lentz. Paige, Wilson, Hodges, Koger Jr. Cassidy Shearer, a defending champion, down in eighth place, but we still have a lot more chopping and sawing to do. The time commitment to train for this unique sport is a large undertaking, but even with that, some athletes find time to give back to their community. Find out more about these athletes in our Ace Hardware Helpful Profile. I'm part of the Boy Scouts, you know, I help volunteer with them every now and then. I do a little walkthroughs, talk to the Scouts and stuff. And I actually did a little lumberjack demonstration for a Boy Scout troop and a Cub Scout troop. And coach for the soccer team and the youth, youth club. I mean, I love sharing the, the sport and trying to get other people interested and people really, really enjoy it. And I love helping the community. I love helping kids, honestly. You know, the soccer is nice to, in any sport, honestly, help kids grow in a sport and uh, learn a discipline and just, you know, work on themselves and on getting better at the sport. It's nice to see. Uh, progression and people wanting to do better and wanting to play, play a sport. Next up is the standing block chop. Athlete versus tree, their goal, sever a 12 inch log. This is the standing block. 
The standing block mimics felling a tree with a racing ax as fast as possible. When the gun fires, you have to chop halfway through the log. In order to do that, know the log, be familiar with your equipment. The best athletes will put 10 to 12 hits in the front. The elite athlete will put six to seven hits in the front. The turn is a four step motion with speed, minding the chips on the ground which you've removed. Run to the back side with no hesitation. Open up the back with confidence, making a split decision. Do I take another chip for safety? Or do I have the confidence to drive this log off? First heat of the standing block chop, Josh Wilson versus Matthew Bolton. Josh Wilson on the left from Morgantown, Pennsylvania. Third discipline standing block chop on stand number one, Josh Wilson. West Virginia, Matthew Bolton at stand West number two Virginia. from New York. Check that, sorry, Josh. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Saws away, axes are back out. Matt Bolton first to the block, right on the heels of that go. Josh Wilson coming a little flat on the top side of that. I think maybe he's, uh, he's around already. I hope he got the job done on the far side of that block because there's a lot of wood left on the near side of this block. He's gonna have to drive some big timber. Matt Bolton has a better technical cut. Whoa. It does, it pays out over Josh Wilson. So we'd like to say Josh took out a loan on the front of that block and had to pay it back on the back side. There's a good look inside the front of Matt Bolton's standing block chop. Clean lines, worked his way all the way to the middle, did every job he had to do on the front. He's just got to make his way back to that point from the back side of the block. Nice, clean cut, Matt Bolton. There you go, a little fist pump. That's deserved. That's a great cut. Uh, what's going on with you today? <laughs> uh, no, I'm having a great day uh, for myself. Put down some really good times. Told myself I was going to do 11 in the front, really get my near wood uh, on that front side. And it actually came off earlier than I thought it was going on the back. I thought I was going to have to put another driver in, but on my last two downs, it came off on that far. So, you know, we're always told a sure cut is a winning cut. Absolutely a beautiful cut. Good job. Yeah, yesterday I, yesterday I kind of went for it a little too much. I didn't put any up chips in on my backside and I just tried to drive it. Today I told myself, make sure to clear that one on the backside and let her rip. Right, good job. Thanks. There's your officials right there, Matthew Bolton with the 20.86. Josh Wilson in second place, 21.07. Heat number two of the standing block, Arden Coger Jr. versus Walt Page. Jr. on the left out of Webster Springs, West Virginia, and all the way from Toll House, California is Walt Page. Arden Coger Jr. in his 26th championship final here on stand number one coming in in seventh place Walt Page in fourth place to start this discipline over on stand number two athletes ready stand to your timber three two one go a lot of reach a lot of stretch over on stand number two Walt Page Tollhouse California uses that to advantage a very Mel Lentz like body style Arden Coger Jr. on stand number one is bringing the power and bringing the speed. He puts in more cycles per second than most other competitors out here. He's got the job done on the front, looking for the last wow. fibers. Whoa! It's going to be Arden Coger Jr. just edging out Walt Page. There's looking at the front side of the chop from Arden Coger Jr. Ran out of that thing just a little bit early. May have known that he had the, the wood to get it done. Had a good stick of timber there. Going to pump one, two more up hits in this thing, then goes into full-blown drive mode. Two almost did it. Came in just a little bit flat. Goes back for number three and clears that block. Arden, you're always analyzing the standing block especially. Why are so many good standing block cutters left-handed? Well, th to be honest, the, the majority of people are right-handed. And so 
when you hold the bottom of the axe with your right hand, you have more control over it. And so young axemen should be taught to chop left-handed if they are right-handed. It gives them more control and more accuracy and more power. And so that's the reason why I do it. I write with both hands, but prim primarily my right. But my father started me chopping left-handed when I was very young. Thanks for that explanation. Unofficially, you're in the lead around 20 seconds. Well, that's, for an old fat guy, I'll take it. It's a great cut for me. All right, thanks, Arden. Yeah. It's gonna be Arden Coger Jr. edging Walt Page there. 20.401 for Coger. Walt Page at 20. 0.625, they are one and two after two heats. They are perfecting technique. They Heat are Heat number three of the standing block chop. Adam Lethgo versus Ben Nicely. Adam Lethgo on stand number one, going against the man currently sitting second overall. Heat number three and a couple of choppers who got it under 20 seconds in their qualifying rounds. Adam Lethgo with a 19.83 and Ben Nicely be on stand number two. He cut a 19.35. 19.83 for Lethko, I should say. You know, the other folks that I, I should be crediting that I haven't mentioned yet all weekend, it, it's the whole timber procurement and preparation process from Granite State. I mean, we're not seeing runaway blocks. These are consistent sticks of wood. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Ben Nicely's been putting on a great show so far. Lethko is chopping to survive. He is currently at the bottom of the heap. He's in one of those two positions that'll be cut. He would not even be able to cut a springboard, which happens to be one of his strongest events. He wants that springboard, and that's what he's chopping for right now in the standard block. Trouble for Ben Nicely as he split the block. He's got to reach over, find that far fiber. He does. That could have come off at least two swings earlier for Ben Nicely. See right there, Ben is beat out. He is pinched out. There is no more cuttable wood. We saw the same problem for Matt Coger in the semifinal round. Now he's just hoping that block holds together. Was talking with Matt after his semifinal cut. And he says, you know, Kevin, he says, I was kind of resting the ax. I would hit and pause for a nanosecond, let that block settle down so it didn't reverberate back away from the stands. Some of the best choppers say your opening hits need to be as hard as you can, as fast as you can. You really delivered them in. What happened on that first down hit, though? I came in a little narrow on my lines. I, wanted, I was a little bit lower than I wanted to be, a little bit steeper than I wanted to be, too. So I had to basically go straight in on my next two down hits, uh, and that caused the log to split. So I did a little bit more work on the back than I wanted to, but. It is what it is. Well, you had the composure to get it off legally. You're sitting second overall in steel points right now. Keep it going. I will. I appreciate it. Oh, just a handful of fibers for Adam Lethgo. Has to go back, take that one last hit to swipe it off. That hit cost him the heat. Well, neither of these axemen ready to come up with their best or able to come up with their best here in this finals round of the standing block chop. So it's going to be Ben Nicely in official time at 21.58 and Adam Lethko in sixth place with a 22.31. Twenty point four zero, the time to beat. It looks like it could potentially fall now. Let's give it up for Matt Slingerland and Nate Hodges. Couple of the strongest competitors out there from Knoxville, Tennessee, and North Fork, California. Ready to go with heat number four. Here comes Matt Slingerland, surprisingly in 10th place as we enter this discipline here. He's got to kind of get on it here. And Nate Hodges in six, right dead center. He'll be on stand number two. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three. Two, one, go! Both of these competitors have been right on the precipice of championship status. Haven't been able to just close that gap. Hodges around quick, around that nine second mark, putting in a small back face. Slingland setting a shower of chips over towards Hodges. Hodges at the 16 and a half second mark. Not the prettiest front face, but man, was he putting hits in. 
and shifting a lot of timber. Gets that near, you see that block twist, and then just drives a sickening amount of white pine on that last blow. Nate, you have one of the fastest swing speeds in the world. I timed you at 2019 at a .97 seconds per hit. And you just put 16 hits in in around 16 seconds. How are you feeling this year? Well, you know, that's always been my goal from the beginning. Put them in hard and often, and then that, that's what happens. So, uh, you know, I'm trying to get out there and just do the best cut I could. And that, that one was pretty good. It was pretty good. I had a couple chips hanging in my way, but, uh, you know, those, those probably cost me at least a hit. But other than that, I'm happy with it. Thanks for your time. Yep. Nate Hodges said just pretty good, 16.364. His official time and Matt Slingerland, 19.65. So for now, some good distance between Nate Hodges and the rest of the field. Heat fight of the standing block, Matthew Coger versus Grant Foreman. Matt Coger on stand number one, your leader right now in steel points. There's Grant Foreman. Currently in 12th place, he's really got to get something big happening right here, going up against the six-time national champion, Matthew Coger. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Grant wrote himself a little memo there. It says big on the front side of that log. I think that's supposed to be a reminder to open this block big, do your work on the front side, and then reap the benefits on the back. He and Matt are both into the back. Matt has got his block just torn apart into multiple pieces. Grant should be looking to drive this. Got to stay high, keep slope. There it is for Grant Foreman as well. Unofficial time for Matt Koger in the mid 14 second range. Let's take a look here for Matt Koger. He ran into trouble the other day. Got himself pinched out and split the log. Same thing happened here again. Should not be an issue. As long as he severs all of the wood with his ax, should count as a clean cut. Matt, talk about the finish. Just a classic Matthew Koger front. You went to the back. When it came off, there was a sliver of wood. You had to make a quick decision because the clock would keep running if you hit that. Yeah, it was, a, it was a little bit cheeky, I guess, but uh, normally I, I go back and finish it off because I'm just like traditional that way, I guess. Um, but you know, you're allowed to have a little bit of wood there as long as it doesn't run to the end of the log. So if it ran all the way to the end of the log, like the flat space of the log, I would have had to go back and hit that. Um, but seeing that it was just a little break and it was just, it was clear, I just decided not to go back and nip it off. Um, otherwise, yeah, it would have added my time and just been a little bit a bit uh, further behind. Good job, you just took the lead right around 14 seconds. Thank you. It was a heads up move by six time champion Matt Koger, recognizing that sliver of wood did not extend all the way to the end of the block. Watch the back of this block. Puts in one, then two up hits. And then gets ready to cash the check and drive this thing off. Well, there you go, Matt Koger making a strong decision in the heat of the moment there. It pays off with the best time we have seen so far through this entire competition of 14.088. Matt Koger on top ahead of Nate Hodges. Final heat of the standing block, Cassidy Shear versus Jason Lentz. And big Jason Lentz on your right side, taking third overall in steel points right now, chasing 14.09 from Matt Koger. Final heat, number six here. The standing block chop, Cassidy Shear, the defending champion. Currently in eighth place coming into this discipline, going up against third place, Jason Lentz. Shear on stand one, Lentz on the right on stand two. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. 
Oof, Cassidy Shear right on that go on stand number one. Over on stand number two, there's been talk for years about Jason and when's he gonna get his crown? When's he gonna be the champion? 2021 is looking really good for Jason Lentz. He's sitting in a great position. He's got a great cut in the standing block. I was just gonna say, <laughs> he went. He thought that thing was gonna go on on the the hit before. It didn't, and he got that look in his eye. Yeah. Like, and lean back and just rip the top of that block off. Very small front face for Jason Lentz here. You can see his marks there. He stepped the thing way down and then went to work on the backside. Drew one more chip out and then he just, just is gonna lay in a bunch of destructive blows. He thought it should have gone there. Reared back and put some extra horsepower in it. Reached over that far side. As soon as you get that near set of fibers cut the top of that block, it shows you, it just twists a little bit, and it opens up the far side wood, cleared it off. Since I know sometimes it's tough to relive the chop, but you have to. You hung the first hit, clearly you're upset. Could you share with us uh, what happened? Yeah, it just reached a little bit too far. You know, the uh, the time restraints, you only get 30 seconds to set up this year, and uh, it's a bit different than normal. I could have taken my time, or I used to be able to take my time a little bit more than this year. and. I don't know, I just didn't cut it the way I wanted, wasn't pleased. Well, let's get ready for the next event, thank you. Thanks, Dave. Here's the wrap up from Cassidy Shear. You see there, there's a hang up. This is the back side of his block. He's in full drive mode, punched it in the guts. You can see there's some breaking in the fibers, but it isn't just quite ready to go. Drives through it, has to go back and actually ends up shoving it off at the end. There's your official times right there for Jason Lentz. It's going to be a 16.63, putting him in third place in the standing block there. And Cassidy Shear at 20.69. He winds up in seven. Matthew Coger wins it 14.08. And there they go, your overall points after the first three disciplines. Matthew Coger on top. Good lead, but not insurmountable lead over Jason Lentz. Nate Hodges in third place. Walt Page. Round out the top four right there, and unfortunately, we have to make a cut. Only the top 10 at this point. We'll go on to the next two disciplines. So to Adam Lethko and Grant Foreman, congratulations. Making the finals is a great achievement, and uh, they'll wish for a, a better result next time around. And we'll see them next time around. Steel Timber Sports is sponsored by Steel maker of a full line of gasoline and battery-powered handheld outdoor power equipment. Find yours at SteelUSA.com. By the Duluth Trading Company, the official workwear of Steel Timber Sports. By Ace Hardware. Ace is the helpful place. And by John Deere. Nothing runs like a deer. For our top 10, though, it's time to move on to the single buck. On go, you want to go full speed on a push or a pull stroke using the entire saw. It's a two to three peg and raker. The pegs are the teeth. They cut the wood. The rakers clean the wood. You want to use the full saw, cutting on the forward stroke, cutting on the back stroke, using every muscle in your body from your toes all the way up to your head, driving the saw with confidence through the entire log. If you deviate from your technique, you can dive a raker into the wood, bringing you to a sudden stop. Then you have to regain that momentum, losing time. First heat of the single buck, Cassidy Shear versus Matt Slingerland. Matty Slingerland on your right, undefeated. Cassidy Shear, returning champion from 2019. Looking to change that stat. Heat one of the single buck competition and two, two competitors for whom Timber Sports are a family legacy, that is for sure. Cassidy Shear is gonna be on stand number one, coming in in eighth place. And overall points and in seventh place, Matt Slingerland. Time this is the part of the show where competitors look around and there just isn't as many of them as there were a few minutes ago. We're yeah, in round yeah. two. We've lost four exceptional competitors. 
And this is That's a great to moment them. to talk about Cassidy Shear's setup. These guys only have one minute to prep. Athletes for this ready. Event. Stand to your timber. Cassidy said, well, I'm going to build Three, the jig. Three, two, yeah. one, go. Comes out, lays it down in place. Got off to a bit of a rough start there. Matt Slingerland is not going to wait to find out how things turn out. Oh, there's trouble for Matty oh, Slingerland, too. Drives it off. 11 second run. Trouble on both of those sticks. Let's watch Matt Slingerland go to work here. His dad, Mike, offering words of encouragement. Tire saw at work there. Every tooth getting the job done. Somewhere right in this area of the block, though. Trouble. There it is. He hangs on the far side. A little bit too much of an angle change. Matt, a good cut in the single buck. You had a hang. I know you're kind of having a tough day. You're always gracious with your interviews. Tell us how you're feeling and how that cut went. Yeah, like you said, Dave, I've just been having a rough day. Uh, single buck, it was going good. It felt good like yesterday. And I think I just tried a little too hard on the bottom and it cost me a stroke. So uh, we'll see, see how it holds up. But I know that I could have done way better than that. But next time. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Twenty nineteen Cassidy Shear comes back just getting a little too greedy, draws that saw back, lifts up on the handle and hangs the nose on the far corner of the block. There again, another hang up, rips his hand off the handle. Back edge of that saw can be sharp. It doesn't have to be sharp, but it uh, more than once I've got my hand on those things, so. Tough break for Cassidy Shear. He's not liking that sensation. Going over at the sideline, get wrapped up a bit. Matt Slingerman going to take the heat. Official time of 10.85. Cassidy Shear, 12.77. Heat number two of the single buck, Ben Nicely versus Arden Koger Jr. Ten, eight, five, time to beat by Matt Slingerland. Heat number two, here we go with Ben Nicely coming in here. Sixth in total points, steal points, fifth place. Arden Koger Jr., he's on stand two, nicely on stand one. Good on Ben Nicely, too. His first year in the finals. Yeah. Uh, rookie competitor by every every stretch of the definition. Made it to round two in the finals. Yeah. Everything from here on out is just the gravy train with biscuit wheels. <laughs> That's... Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Arden Coger Jr., an exceptional single buck Sawyer. Just epic stroke speed, tons of power, and he's showing Ben nicely what this event is all about. Nicely responding at the bottom of the block will be about a stroke and a half behind Arden Coger Jr., who shows about an 11 and a, 11 and a half second run. Let's go back and take a look at the work here of Arden Coger Jr. Not the longest saw in the world, not the longest run in the world. A lot of foot movement on that carpet. That's all lost horsepower through a lack of traction. See that back foot really skidding out on him. I think with a little better lockdown on that carpet, maybe we could have had a little more of that saw used, shaped another couple of tenths off, maybe a couple of hundreds off, I should say. You know, Ben Nicely has the height advantage on you in this single buck cut. It seems like the bigger the log, though, the more it favors you. How did that cut go? The cut itself was mediocre, to be honest. Right before I went, I kind of felt a twinge in my adductor. And so I'm like, oh, no, because I'm a very leggy Sawyer because I'm short. And so I wasn't able to use my legs as efficiently as I wanted to. And so I just couldn't motor. I couldn't get moving. And so. It wasn't what I wanted, but 
who knows? You know, maybe I'll make the next round, maybe I won't, but so what, I'm here. I'm happy to be here. Power to the old fat people out there because just because we're old doesn't mean we still can't do it, all right? <laughs> Thanks for your time, Art. Thank you. Well, Arden Coger Jr. with a message for, well, people like me, to be <laughs> honest. And he's in second place right now with an 11.39. Matt Slingerland said he would have, should have, could have done better. But uh, still hanging in there in first place with the 10.85. I do feel like that was a Heat direct three call of the to single arms. buck. Tommy. Walt Page yeah, right. versus Nate Hodges. I was expecting ready to leap to out of that up. chair and head for the chair or head for the stage. This line on stand number one on your left side of the stage. And Nate Hodges coming all the way from California on your right, taking second overall last year in Steel Timber Sports Finals. Heat number three set to go here with fourth place Walt Page. Stand number one going up against third place. Total steal points, Nate Hodges. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Both of these competitors desperately want to be part of that championship conversation. Trouble for Nate Hodges in the upper third of that block with a hang on the push stroke. Walt Page staying with it though. Hodges just putting in an epic run. He's gonna rally back to take the heat. Let's go back and take a look at this run from Nate Hodges. Very Arden Coger-esque sort of sawing approach. Just got it wadded up. He pushed, saw, did not go. Recovered very well. Look at the spray of noodles coming out of that saw. There is just carnage hanging everywhere. Towards the bottom of that block, he really got more of the saw incorporated. Boy, did that pay out big time. Gets him the heat win. Nate, looks like since the semifinal round, you made an adjustment on the angle of the saw at the start. What was your goal? Yeah, I don't know if it was, a, a, we call it an adjustment on purpose, but you know, putting that minute on us out there, I like it. Puts pressure on everybody, but even, you know, little things like that, I didn't have time to get everything dialed the way I wanted. I didn't have my foot blocks. That's my first go without foot blocks. So a little adjustment out here on the big stage, and, you know, cost me two, a good second from yesterday, second and a half. So little things like that. Well, the big thing is the springboard coming up. You're the national record holder. Good luck on that. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Nate Hodges' official time of 13.23, just ahead of Walt Page, as we say, to win that heat right there. Yet uh, drops him a little bit. He came in in third place, this fifth place, a little bit of a setback, but to bear in mind, as was just mentioned, uh, uh, his number one event, which he's the record holder, is coming up next. Final heat of the single buck, Jason Lentz versus Matthew Koger. Big Jason Lentz on the left side. Both these competitors chasing 10-8-5. Laid down in heat one by the undefeated Matt Slingerland. Number one and two in points coming up for the final heat of the single buck here. Matthew Koger in first place, second place Jason Lentz. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Love watching these guys go head to head in any discipline. The history between them is uh, is undoubtable. Look at Jason Lenslow go on stand number one. The nose of that saw disappearing. He is, just, oh boy, that was ready to go. He tried to shove it off just a little too soon. Had to kind of regain uh, composure and pull off the bottom of that cut. Showing around 11 flat cut. That is really great sawing from Jason Lentz using every inch of that saw. Both of these guys have done extensive work with saw filer J.P. Mercier in Quebec, Canada. And it is, uh, it's paying off. They've got the form, they've got the tools. Great run here as we go back and look at Jason Lentz with uh, help from Lumber Jill, Aaron Lavoie. 
There it is, that hang up just a little bit at the end. That was Jason just going all chips, all cards down, trying to shove off that last bit. It just wouldn't quite go. And pull it back and rip off those last few fibers. Jason, you're having a heck of a day. Still looking for your first win of the day. Uh, tell us about that single buck. Uh, yeah, I started out good. Um, I made sure there yesterday in the semifinals, I didn't pull the saw inside the wood, and it's a six foot two saw, so there's a three or four little cutters out there on the end, and then a raker right after that. Yesterday, I hung it up. The day I was a little more deliberate on that first stroke, made sure those end teeth came all the way inside the wood and cleared room for that raker. You got about 15 pounds of saw at the bottom of the cut being supported by just a few inches of wood. How difficult is it to control that final stroke? It's real difficult, Dave. Once I get to the bottom, I get antsy and want to use my power just to heal that thing off. But uh, I almost did it there and it tossed me a few tenths, but I was able to regain and pull, pull the cookie off on the pull stroke. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Well, there you go, Jason Lynch. Time of 10.91 put him in second place and Matthew Koger right behind. It's going to be Matt Slingerland holding on from the very first heat with his 10.85 to get top points in the single buck. Tommy, that's just an example of how fast Matt Slingerland is cutting in the single buck right now. We all saw that hang up. Even with a hang up like that, he is moving through the timber fast enough to still take the win. There's the outlook for overall points right now. Steel points and Matt Koger. Six-time champion on top with 44. Jason Lentz, three behind him. And six behind third place is Matt Slingerland. Did himself a whole lot of good with that uh, top finish in the single bump. Now, time to get ready for the springboard chop. Afraid of heights? Danger? This is not the discipline for you. The springboard chop, using your axe and two boards to ascend a nine-foot pole standing eight feet in the air to sever a 10 and a half inch block. How do you get to the block, though? You have to look at this event in steps. Step one, chop a bottom pocket. That first pocket is gonna be four to six hits. You will be inserting a board into that pocket. Then you will jump on that board to chop a second pocket. That second pocket will be made in four to six hits to insert a second board. Jump up, get to the back of the board. That's where you will use every muscle in your body to chop 80 to 90% of the way through the front side of that block. Then you will turn to the back side. You have two choices, chopping up and down, removing the chip, or the new school style of hard downward slices. First heat of the springboard, Cassidy Shear versus Matt Slingerlin. We just saw Matt Slingerlin winning the single buck, catapulting himself up into the number three spot overall. We are in the individual round two is what it's called of this competition here with eight competitors after starting with 12. And at the end of this discipline right here, the springboard chop, we will be losing another two competitors. One of the guys below that mark right now is our defending champion, Cassidy Shear. He will be on your right as we look at the stage going up against number three in total points as we start this set of heats, Matt Slingerland. See Cassidy Shear sporting some blue bandages after his single buck run. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! It's on his left hand, which remains fairly stationary on the ax. It doesn't slide up and down the handle like his right hand would. Still gonna feel a little funny, be a little bit off, but he's putting that out of his mind and boarding very well. Cassidy Shear, around the 14 second mark, set that second board all the way out to the back, and Cassidy Shear goes to work on the block at the top. Matt Slingerland about four or five hits behind. Cassidy Shear around to the back, an off-handed sort of a windmill slashing motion. There it is, wow. three shots from Cassidy Shear coming in around 40 seconds. Matt Slingerland about three blows behind. Let's watch Cassidy Shear go to work here. Four hits is considered kind of the ideal pocket. 
Here comes hit number four with a little flick to clean it out. Looks like a beautiful board set. Insert springboard, rinse, repeat. There's Cassidy at work with his sort of semi-patented roundhouse slashing motion that he's been applying for the past few years. Looked like there was a lot of timber there, but he just slashed through it. Cassidy, prior to the springboard, you cut yourself in the single. I spoke with the EMTs. They said you shouldn't need stitches, but hands bleed. They got you wrapped up. Right. Did that affect your springboard? It almost looked like you found another gear. Yeah, I mean, the last three events have been a bit of a train wreck for me. That was my chance to go out, hopefully win that event. That should get me in the hot sauce, so I'm still in it. Uh, I love that event. It, it, it's good to lay down a fast time like that. Absolutely, 40 seconds flat. You're in the lead. You may win the event, but you got Nate Hodges coming up. He's got to sit back and watch. Yeah, yeah I mean, Nate, Walt, uh, Matt, they all could beat that, but uh, yeah, I, I gave that everything you had, and uh, I'm hoping it stands up. We're going to let you get that hand looked at. Hopefully, get your hot side right. Thank you. Defending champ Cassidy Shear rising to the occasion there, facing possible elimination. After the springboard chop lays down a good time of 40.02. Matt Slingerland in second place with 45.371. Second heat of the springboard, Ben Nicely versus Arden Koger Jr. Arden Jr. from Webster Springs, West Virginia, sitting in fourth place overall right now, only two points ahead of his opponent, Ben Nicely. Ready for heat two of four heats in the springboard chop. Individual round two in Arden Coker Jr. in his 26th series championship. Fourth place, cutting on stand number one, Ben Nicely. Coming into this one in fifth place in total steel points on stand two. Have to dig into the bios, Tommy. I'm not sure that Ben Nicely was born the first time Art Coker Jr. made the That's Steel Timbers Sports call Finals. There, I think. Yeah, for sure. It's a testament to the staying power and the talent and the grit of Arden Coker Jr. and also this rapid rise for Ben Nicely. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Right together, right on that go. Remember, a four hit pocket is essentially ideal. A little bit of a cleanup from Ben Nicely, a little bit of double pump from Arden Coger Jr. Both contestants up on that first board with beautiful looking board sets. Ben rested his axe there just for a second, but pulled it out fairly cleanly. Also looks like a good second board set for Ben Nicely. Arden doesn't seem super happy with his board set. He's dancing around a bit, letting it settle in some. Realizes the time is ticking and gets to work. We're at that 35 second mark. Cassidy Shear again, around that 40 second mark. These guys aren't gonna catch that time. They're gonna have to post the best time possible, gather as many points as they can before our next round of elimination. Sagging board. Just, just saps energy out of you. Every swing, you're actually, you're choked up, you're up higher, you're out of your power zone. Arden Coger Jr., switch-handed cutter, looking to reach around, there it is, finds the last fiber. Ben nicely slashing, he finds that far wood. Both these guys hanging around that one minute mark. Not the climb they wanted to have. There's a great shot of Arden Coger's uh, second board sagging off behind him. 
You can see that block of wood at the far end of the board. That's where he wants his back foot. And he also wants his back foot on plane, if not just above his front foot. Not a great working position. Harden, you get down on yourself once in a while being the oldest competitor out here, but you just beat the youngest competitor out here. You've got a heck of a springboard despite nursing an injury. Oh, you know what? Chopping nine feet off the ground on one leg is an adventure. Let me just say, I will tell you this, on my fourth hit, I was like, I don't know if I'm dizzy or if that block is moving in front of me. But it was, it was definitely, you know, for me, 63 seconds is the fastest time I've cut this year. So I'll take it. I know I'm not competitive with the young guys anymore, but I still give them problems. Good to see you. Congratulations. You've been having a great day. Thank you, dude. I appreciate it. Well, Arden Coker Jr. carrying the torch this time around for sure. It's the best cut he's had this season, 63.24. Puts him in third place, still Cassidy Shear benefiting from all the goings on so far. Just two heats all. Heat three of the springboard from the West Coast, Walt Page versus Nate Hodges. Walt Page out of Toll House, California, going against another California resident from Norfolk. Norfolk, California, Nate Hodges. Heat number three of four heats in the springboard chop and Walt Page in a do or die situation right here. He's currently in eighth place in points. Position seven and eight in points are gonna be eliminated after the springboard chop. So Walt needs a high, high finish and probably some compliance from a few of the other competitors as well to save his spot in the hot saws, which is how we're going to end our day here. Nate Hodges, sixth place. Not totally got it in the bag either, but uh, this is his specialty event, and he can be super explosive here. He can go very low on time. Interesting how the two of these gentlemen came to the sport. Walt Page through the college ranks. Nate Hodges just said, yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. <laughs> yeah. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. I just darting in some really serious hits on that first board. Gets up, well, I was going to say gets up ahead of Walt Page, but I don't know, somewhere in there, Nate lost a little time and Walt gained it. Here goes Walt with his second board set. He says, I don't want to be part of that two-man party that's got to leave before Hot Saw. Walt Page is just putting on an epic cut against our national record holder, Nate Hodges. couple small hang-ups of the ax for Walt Page, but he is in the middle of the wood now, and it is cutting well. He is well into the backside of the wood. I've watched that ax now twice sneak around the backside. Should only take one more blow. There it is, Walt Page. Walt, instead of turning on that board, two slashing blows on his offhand side. A few seconds behind Walt Page. I'd have lost money on that one, Tommy. Mm -hmm. I would have, too. Go back and run, watch this run from Walt Page. There's pocket number one. Very smooth, very fluid first board set. He actually, there's where the problem was. He actually caught the near side of that pocket with the shoe on the springboard. Had to kind of double clutch it and go back and shoot it again. Look at the work he does on the front side of this block. There's the, here comes the second one I was talking about, but two blows we watched from our perspective. We saw the nose of that ax just seem to warp around the corner of that block, set him up for a two hit quick finish on his offhanded side. Walt, well, just three seconds out of the first place position right now. I just heard you saying to one of the judges, could have been faster. What's, in, what's uh, what were you thinking? Oh, absolutely, it could have been better. I mean, there's lots of, uh, there was some mistakes made when I was cutting it. You know, I had to pick up some wood and I just, uh, you know, could have, could have definitely saved three or four hits and been a little closer to Cassidy. But I mean, he did a great job putting the heat on us for later on. And that's what we were trying to do is beat that 40 second time. So, all right, good job. Thanks. Good effort from Walt Page right there. Will it be enough to keep him from elimination? We shall see. Cassidy Shear still holding on the top spot with 40.02. Matt Slingerland in third. And Nate Hodges, a 
as it stands right now in fourth place in the springboard. Start to gristle that are Richter scale rumble in the springboard. Let's bring him out. Jason Lentz versus Matthew Koger. Our final heat, and these are our top two competitors overall right now. Only three points separating them. Advantage, Koger. Ready for the final heat of the springboard. What a battle going on at the top of our leaderboard. Number one, Matt Koger now taking on number two, Jason Lentz. Should be a great race. Springboard bar has been set at a substantial level. Those times hanging around the 40-second mark are attainable, but they're significant. Mm. Athletes ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Synchronized run so far, four and four for both of these guys. A little bit of a, a wonky board set for both of them. Matt Koger sloping down at the back. Jason Lentz, a little bit of a side slope. Hopefully better second sets for both of these guys. Matt Koger, if anything, too much upslope. He'd probably rather be down a little bit flatter, but he's way out to the back, leaning into it. Good, clean faces, great cuts from both of these guys. Again, this is your number one and number two overall points leaders right now. We're at the 40-second mark on the unofficial clock. Both of these guys in the backside. Matt Koger a little bit hesitant. There it is. Wow, Jason Lentz right on his heels. Back and take a look at these runs. This is Matt Koger, stand number two, current points leader, six-time champion of the Steel Timber Sports Series. Four-hit run. There is the top. Nice clean cut. Lost a little bit of wood on the near side. Too much upslope on that board, but he made it work. Again, you just feel like you're leaning into that cut. Draws a couple of chips on the backside. The wood just wouldn't shift for him. Finds that last fiber. Matt, uh, a little dicey on that bottom board, but you were able to put a quick four hits in the top pocket to get off that bottom board. Was that giving you trouble? Uh, it was kind of a little bit of trouble because they were both sort of opposite ends of the spectrum. The bottom board was sagging a little bit, the top one was a little bit angled up. So it's kind of hard to drive really off that back, back foot on the top. But uh, no, it's just, it, was a, it was a good pocket. I could see it, like it was just a visual. It was good and just throw the board in and go. And, so, yeah, good, good cuts all around. You're looking for title number seven. We're going into the hot saw. How are you feeling? Well, the, the seven titles don't matter. It's uh, just putting up a good cut, and then uh, whoever tallies up the points at the end of the day and decides who wins, then that's, that's, that's who wins. Thanks very much. Thank you. Well, there are your final springboard results right there, and Cassidy Shear doing himself a world of good. With that 40.02, he laid down in the very first heat. Walt Page, ditto for him. Really did what he could do to avoid elimination here. Matt Slingerland in third place. Matt Koger, his official time, 45.77, less than a second ahead of his uh, closest competitor. Points-wise, coming into this round, Jason Lentz. And there is your overall points situation right now, a five-point lead. Matthew Koger over Jason Lentz, Matt Slingerland. Two points behind Jason Lentz, Cassidy Shear retains his spot with 41 points. Walt Page and Arden Koger Jr. will compete in the hot saw. Eliminated will be Nate Hodges, surprisingly, and Ben Nicely. Steel Timber Sports is sponsored by Steel maker of a full line of gasoline and battery-powered handheld outdoor power equipment. Find yours at SteelUSA.com. By the Duluth Trading Company, the official workwear of Steel Timber Sports. By Ace Hardware. Ace is the helpful place. And by John Deere. Nothing runs like a deer. Let's get going on the deciding event. The hot saw. Loudest and fastest event in timber sports. These are the Frankensteins of the saw world. This is the hot saw. 
Once the competitors bring their saws up on stage, they have an 18-inch log in front of them. Now, they are allowed a 60-second warm-up. Why? These saws are 250 to 350 cc engine. Since this is the final event, the competitors can no longer hold back. Hands on top of the wood, they wait for the go. On go, they must start the saw, pick it up, full throttle into the wood in around one second, severing that 18-inch log with a 200-mile-an-hour chain speed. A seamless transition into the up cut, once again feeling that 60-horsepower engine, then going into the third cut, hopefully dropping three clean discs in around six seconds, getting major points. Competitor number one, the top six going into the hot saw from California, Nate Hodges. Running a 430cc Honda. Well, we enter the land of the unknown here with the hot saw. Always oh, kind of a, a potential to upset anyone's best laid plans here. Nate Hodges Warm will up be your going saw. first. <laughs> Tommy, I, I've got to respectfully disagree with your analysis there. This is the land of the known. It is known that there is chaos. It is <laughs> okay. known that there are cutouts. It is known that there are mechanical failures. It is known that this is the most catastrophic event that we possibly have and here it is at the end of the day highest points value we're going to decide a champion Nate with a 19 point deficit in total points to our leader Matthew Cogan, 30 seconds as we start here in this final discipline Nate Hodges was tied with Arden Coger Jr. in terms of points accumulated but he had a lower total time in all of his disciplines that broke the tie here he has one last shot. Athlete ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Oh, trouble right out of the gate for Nate Hodges. He regroups. There are five other guys backstage right now that are very relieved at what they just saw. And there is one guy on this stage that's feeling very bad about that performance. Nate Hodges is an excellent hot saw operator. I think we just saw the nerves get the best of him. He was going to push that thing just all cards in, everything he had, whatever he could do to get as many points as possible. And right off the gate, that saw was not happy. Things got a little gurgle, a little bobble, maybe a missed throttle. And uh, you can see right there, I think something just didn't come up right. And that interrupted his routine. It interrupted that muscle memory. It interrupted that momentum. He's got to pull back, get realigned. It resulted in a thick cut. Now he's getting back to more of the usual task, but a little concerned. Any time that you have to stop and aim this saw, and you don't just rely on, on your, your natural mechanics of, of your usual flow, that's when disaster results. Let's go back and look at this run here again from Nate Hodges. Rips on that cord, saw fires. You can see though, I'm watching his right hand. I can just barely see his right hand off the side of the screen. And it looks like he's blipping the throttle, like the saw just didn't want to come up for some reason. I'm not sure. Either that or he was repositioning his grip on the trigger. By the time he gathers it up, he's already eroded away a significant portion of the top of that block. Let's bring him out one more time from Toll House, California, Walt Page. Second contestant in the hot saw is going to be Walt Page. Fifth in overall points coming into this last discipline of the day. Best time laid down, the only time laid down so far by Nate Hodges, a 9.64. Warm up your saw.
30 seconds. Athlete ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Oh, trouble again. Very similar situation. And Nate Hodges, you hear the saw kind of fall on his face. Walt Page, though, reels in about a 7-3-ish cut. But again, that saw just not sounding snappy. It, I heard it during his warm-up. It took about two or three hits on the throttle before it really sounded like it came to life. You'll see it here in the replay. Comes up, the throttle lock, there, that's, that bucking action is that saw protesting. It's not happy with the temperature. It's not happy with its fuel-air ratio. I'm not sure what's going on. Just see what that does to the competitor. These saws are, are 55, 60 pounds. They're pushing 60 plus horsepower. And you can see as that thing bucks and stutters how it moves Walt Page around, gets him out of rhythm, gets him out of position. Yeah, there again, you can see on the right side of the screen, Walt lifting off the trigger, back on it again. It's the exact same situation that Nate Hodges was in. Managed it a little better, got things under control, posted three cuts. So as we track our overall points, because that's how we decide our champion here, we now see Walt Page with a cut of 7.31. Three complete cuts at times 7.31 can be a powerful thing. This final event of the day. This is a floating number here, the overall points as we go through the remainder. The other athletes in this field. Well, as if you're not relaxed enough when you're competition, when you're competing, you're in the hot seat now. Virtually, you're two points ahead of Matt Colger. That third disc, this a small remaining bit of that line. What were you thinking going into that final cut? Uh, you know, there was there was enough wood there to get the cut in, but I I was didn't want to slow down because this is the finals, and and so I just. Uh, tried to get it back in the wood as quick as I can, and that's where it wound up being. I was pretty happy when I saw that there was a little bit of crayon left there. I will right, well just relax. we got Cassidy Shear coming up, but for now, two points in the lead. Thanks. And our third competitor coming out in the hot saw, the returning champion from 2019, Cassidy Shear. Cassidy Shear, the third of our six competitors in the hot saw here. All Page with the lead in points right now. Cassidy hopes to change that with a complete, with three complete discs here. Warm up your saw. Thirty seconds. Athlete ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. One shot, here we go. Defending champ Cassidy Shear and his sidekick. Purple rain, oh, oh, disaster all over the place. A missed cut, no opportunity to go back and reshoot with a dislodged chain. A terrible end of the day for our 2019 champion Cassidy Shear been bumped and bruised and bloody and unfortunately at this point he is now out unable to make three complete cuts Walt Page is going to retain his hot seat position
DQ and complete this. Here's a run for Cassidy Shear. First cut looks solid up through the top. They're a little bit fat. He's in there well, but just, just getting greedy. Shoved on that saw, sent it out the side of the block. That put uneven pressure on the side of the chain. Shoved it off the side of the bar. End of the day for Cassidy Shear. got to get comfortable. This is what you signed up for, buddy. You're still two points in the lead. I know it's unfortunate watching another competitor, but it happens to everybody. What are you thinking? Oh, absolutely. And Cassidy, I mean, we're all in a position to, um, right now to where you have to make a great hot saw run, and that's what we're all trying to do. And, and Cassidy was absolutely uh, putting down a fast time until that, you know, until that last cookie blew out and chain came off, and, and that's just the game we're playing right now. Okay, thank you. Go back one more time and check out this run from Cassidy Shear. His final moments for 2021. Ended up being a heartbreak though. The first two cuts looked really good. He just been coming down crooked through this. Yeah, he was off at an angle right from the get-go. He was on an outbound trajectory, but he got outbound actually exiting the cut. Like I said, puts differential pressures on sides of that chain. Walked it right off the bar. So Walt Page still on top. Two point lead over Matthew Cooker, who is yet to cut yet. Dave Hodges in third place. He has made his cut. Championship. Jason Lentz in 49. Has a chance. Joe from Slinger. And he was a champion in 2019, second in the world championships on this year. As you say, he's he's been beaten up by these last two disciplines, Kevin. Our fourth hot Sawyer of six from Knoxville, Tennessee, Matty Slingerlin. Warm up your saw. Thirty seconds. Athlete ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Well, it doesn't get much better than that. Matt Slingerland quick to the block. Three fast cuts. I would bet that's going to come out sub five second. Our head judge, Rich Hallett, is going to come over and confirm that he has three clean cuts. Let's go back and watch this run from Matt Slinger. This was a very discipline that came, kept him out of the championship just a few short years ago. Matt Slinger leaves everything on the table here today with three clean discs and a very quick time. We have a new competitor in our hot seat. Walt gave the obligatory glance over to the clock, but he already knew. He knew the results at that point. Great competitor. Awesome to see him come through the college ranks. Definitely a championship in his future. I'll tell you what was missing from that run for Matt Slingerland is that hesitation that we heard with Walt saw, we heard it with Nate saw, 
th this was the first saw that came out during the warm-up that sounded clean, it sounded crisp, it sounded like the fuel air ratio was right, just straight out of the gate. So there we go, Matt Slingerman overall points, he's 65 right now, ahead of Matthew Coger, who has not cut yet, Wolf Page, who has Jason Lentz, who has not cut yet. What happens with Coger and Lentz will decide our championship here. And Matt Slingerland gets to sit and wait. Matty, you laid down a 5.04. You've clawed your way back from the Timber Sports abyss today, fueled by another win in the single buck. Tell us about your day. Yeah, Dave, you're right. It started out rough. Uh, all I could do was do the best I could in the rest of the events. I knew that I'd be there in the single buck and hopefully run a good uh, tree, and I did. So hot saw is my favorite event now. We're going to sit back and let you watch. And our fifth competitor from Diana, West Virginia, Jason Lentz. Up your saw. Both Maddie Slingerland and Jason Lentz have been so close in the past. Jason obviously desperately wants to be there. 30 seconds. Athlete ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Quick to the wood is Jason Lentz. Quick through wow. the wood is Jason Lentz. 498 showing on the unofficial clock right now. We've got to get a ruling from head judge Rich Hallett. Make sure he's got three clean discs. Did not sever the line on the block. It looks like there's plenty of meat on there to me. And that performance is our John Deere power play. Nothing runs like a deer. Jason Lentz just using his own personal horsepower to, to throw that saw into the wood. The second cut got a little bit thick. Third cut had to be a little bit skinny. It's official in Matt Slingerland's mind. You can't see it on camera right now, but he has stood up out of the hot seat. <laughs> I think recognizing the run that just happened at the hands of Jason Lentz. Two great sportsmen, two gentlemen that have been competing against each other for years. Their families have been competing against each other for generations now. And that cut by Jason not only puts him in the lead, but that cut is a new U.S. hot saw record. Editor to cut. Jason, I know there's been a montage made of hot saw mishaps for you, especially in the, in the Timber Sports Finals. You made a flawless run today, potentially a new world record at 4.88. How are you feeling about that cut? How are you feeling about your day? Oh, the day went okay. That cut felt awesome. I want to. Uh, thank my old man for grinding my chain and sticking with me. Well, congratulations. You just got to stay and watch your buddy, Matt Coger. Yep, good luck, Matt. Our final competitor, our points leader, looking for title number seven from Grafton, West Virginia, Matt Coger.
Jason Lynch right behind him all day long, all through this competition, just seemed to get tighter and tighter. And Jason Lynch laying down a marvelous time in the hot sauce. 4.88 officially. The pressure is on Matthew Koger going for his seventh national championship. Warm up your saw. Koger's point lead. 30 seconds. Coming into this discipline here, the story is he gets three clean cuts. He posts a time. He can take the championship. Athlete ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. A little lift between each cut, not going for full tilt. Five, three, nine shown on the board. Now it's in the hands of head judge Rich Hallett to verify that cut or those cuts. traveling a ways across the stage. Well, again, the deal for Matthew Coger to have a chance to win his seventh national title. He has got to get lower than the time laid down by currently second place, Matt Slingerland, 5.04 seconds. And as we wait that official time for Matt Coger, let's take one more look at the replay right here. Watching all the action from Matt Koger here, clean through the wood, but I'm hearing something, Tommy. Between each of those cuts, there's a lift. There's a lift in that throttle. He was not in it full bore all the time. There's just a little bit of safety, I think, built in here. It's a dangerous move. That's that's leaving something to play. I'm gonna say anything till we get the official time again. It has to be below 5.04 seconds laid down by Matt Slingerland. If not. And it is not 5.442. Officially, it is Jason Lentz laying down an incredible 4.88. He takes the national championship. Four tenths of a second. A whole afternoon of all these disciplines and all these competitors, four tenths of a second. That is the timber sports world we are living in now. A decade of coming out here and trying and getting better and better all the time. Coming so close so many times, and now he's done it. Jason Lentz, your champion. And taking the bronze medal, third place, Matthew Slingerland. In addition and in recognition of his third place award, Matt will be receiving a prize pack from Ace Hardware. And the silver medal goes to our six-time national champion. Big round of applause for Matt Koger. In addition and recognition of his silver replacement, Matt receives a prize pack from our sponsor, Duluth Trading Company. And our final competitor, winning his first steel national title, from Diana, West Virginia, Jason Lentz. In addition and in recognition of his first place finish, Jason will receive from John Deere a John Deere Gator. Congratulations to all, ladies and gentlemen, our 2021 U.S. Men's Champions. Once again, a huge congratulations to our winner, Jason Lentz, who set a new U.S. hot saw record and is crowned the 2021 Steel Timber Sports U.S. Champion. And with that, he takes home the grand prize, the John Deere Gator. 
That will do it from North Little Rock, Arkansas. I'm Tommy Sanders for Kevin Holtz. We'll see you next time on Steel Timber Sports.